G'day and welcome to part 18 of the CB750 restoration and I'm throwing them out really really frequently at the moment. So that's great for people into CB750s but not so much for people that are into cars. Uh, this one is all about the oil pressure test on the engine. There's a few tricks with it. And stripping the carbies into the nude. So I've gone into a fair bit of detail with that. That's sort of two parts to this video. Um, the other thing we do is we stick the engine in the frame but of course I didn't film that because we were too busy sort of thinking about how we got to do it, but I explained it in the video and it went in very easily. So I hope you enjoy. I'm right, so going to take this little bung out. And I've got 60 mils of engine oil. And I'm just going to inject this in. It's actually quite hard because it's, hey, it's a cold day today. I need to put this in with a bit of pressure. The idea of this, of course, is it's going to flood this top gallery and it'll flow down into the oil filter. That's the idea. Whether it does or not, it's a different thing. But I need... I haven't got any hose that will firmly fit between this one and the... Uh, what do you call it? The, um, the... Yeah, the orifice. So we'll just go ahead and do this. It's time consuming. There's one and it will flood the oil filter of course and also um, you know, it won't go back to the oil pump because there will be an airlock there but it will help with the lubrication of it which I might just drain that other container out of there I don't want to keep that well, I might put a smoke butt in that you won't? put a smoke butt in that <laughs> <laughs> that'd be good you made me look like. I had to go to the big W to get funnels. I haven't got any. Oh, it has to be around there somewhere. Yeah, just... Have we got a dipstick for it? Yeah, yeah. Do I know where it is? No. Oh, you can see in there, it's pretty easy. It's... You've got to purge every line. What's all the oil running off the bottom union down there? Is it really? No. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'll just leave the lid off and stick the funnel in there. If oil pisses out, I... Well, yeah, it's not a bad experience. Do more. I don't know. Yeah, I reckon. It's not full with its registry. Just back here. Well, it's dear too, I reckon. Motorbike oils. Sit this in that yeah, oil container right. for a sec. I reckon that's gonna have bucket loads for it. Yeah. Let's see if it see if it's gonna do something, hey? Yep. I'm just watching in there those little holes. There's little holes all over the place yeah. for the cam. Got a bit up by now. Yeah, it should have, shouldn't it? Just make sure Just it check the tank, see if there's enough oil yeah. in the tank. It should be fine. They've gone down a little. Yeah, as well. Just check the dip tank. Yeah, there's still heaps in the tank. Won't need any more in there. Bucket loads. I don't even think it's drawing any good, yeah. is it? Drawing it? Maybe it's got an airlock. Yeah, oh, I'll have an airlock. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I just want to keep an eye on this. If it's going down, I'm relaxed. Yeah. Right, well, we're in the unenviable position of having no oil pressure. And it's no surprise. I've done a bit of uh, research, and there are a few reasons for this. Now, I'm going to go through it to a point where it might come across as oversimplified for some people. And others that haven't done this before will come across this same issue and it might clear up a couple of myths. Right, so what we have here is we have an oil tank filled, if you think of the dipstick, it's shouldered on the other side. So the maximal oil is going to be somewhere around the bottom of that pressing, which isn't a whole lot of oil, really. 
Uh, and of course we've got three tubes entering the tank down here. Now, each one of them has a stand tube. So when I'm talking stand tube, I'm talking about a tube that goes from here that's joined to a solid piece, in this case this one, right to the top. That is a vent. To displace any air movement in there and vapours and so forth, that then vents air down into a, a separator, if you like, to collect it and deal with it before it's pumped into the atmosphere. Of course, this one is your main oil take-up, and that has a stand tube that goes about an inch off the bottom, around there. And the reason for that, of course, is it's drawing oil from a, from a minimum level of that, so none of that uh, debris and all that sort of stuff that's sitting in this area is going to be drawn in. The return line comes in and goes right up near the top as well, so that as the oil is pumped back into the tank, it's not pumped back in that location, so it can just circulate hot oil. It's got some chance of separating any debris that comes back and also cooling as well. Now, I made the mistake of filling that with oil and cranking the engine. We've got assembly loop through, it's all good. Some people on the forums talk about them being um, the requirement for them to be cranked for some time. I need to adjust that. The, I don't like that. No, it's the reason I like the Ford engines, the V8s and so forth, because the oil pumps in the sump and you can just turn it with an electric drill and it will get oil pressure before you've even rotated any journal in there. Now, uh, Holden and I think Rover have external ones which need to be primed, and this is no different. Now, I would have thought that that having oil drained straight into the intake of the pump would in fact pick up pressure straight away. If you remember, we primed that main gallery. I'm going to take that cap off over there just to make sure. Now, there's a whole lot of ways people prime these, of course. The first one is they let it soak in oil and they rotate the pump and any bubbles coming out then means that the pump's prime ready to go. But of course, when these engines are upside down, which is how they normally are when you put an oil pump in, of course, you bolt the oil pump up and all that oil drains into the galleries and you've got your air pocket back again. Some people fill them with Vaseline uh, and that way, as it's pumped through, it draws on the oil, drags the oil through and the Vaseline disperses into the lubricant and we're good to go. Now, there are several that have tried to get oil pressure with the Kickstarter. Of course, you need something a bit quicker, given the starter with a fresh battery, just to get that speed up. The problem is there's an air pocket there, and at normal cranking speed, the engine or the pump doesn't have enough pull to um, yank in, or if you, if you like, draw that air through the pump and then have the oil follow it. It's just relying on the elasticity of the air, buffeting the, the oil and not actually dragging it up, if that makes any sense at all. So we're going to try a few things. We're going to get the engine up on an angle. A lot of people have said they've had no success with the engine sitting on a centre stand level. They've had more success with the engine on the side stand, which means it's on some sort of angle, thereby making it easy for the oil to drag in. The other thing I would have thought was worth experimenting with was pressurising the tank um, to about 10 pound, and uh, that way there's a bit of push behind the oil as well. Now today is quite cold, so the oil's going to be thick. So I would have thought thinner oil might be the way to go. So we'll just wait and see. So first things first, I've got it sitting up on an angle, emulating a very steep side stand. Um, we've got slightly thinner oil in the tank. I'm just going to give it a couple of runs on the starter. We don't want to do too many of these, um, just to see if we can get a bit of joy. There's no change in pitch. Um, I'm tipping that's not picked anything up, and I think it should reasonably quickly, although some people do say that they take quite a while to pick up, but I'm not seeing anything there. I'm keen to check in here, because one thing I did was I flooded this gallery, and I just want to see if there's still anything in there. Right, I'm going to fill that again. I want that gallery full. Now straight away, if you look at that oil capillary tube, there's some oil going in there. <laughs> I'm just trying to see in the tank if I can notice. So I've got it right, ah, we're pumping oil. That stand tube is exposed now. So I'll just bang a bit more oil in the tank and I reckon we might have got out of it. Well that's, you know, no sitting here to say stuff like that. I think you're in the thick of the crap again. Hang on, where's my lubricant? But all I did was tilted the engine and reprime that main gallery, and we might have seen something worthy of celebration. 
I guess. I don't know. I don't like turning engines over that um, don't have oil pressure. Let's pop that in, and yeah, it's registering, which is cool. And what we're looking for, uh, oh, look at this, we've got oil pressure. I hadn't even noticed it. So I'm going to set the engine up level again, and this time we're going to read the gauge. We need to see what the heck's going on. Right. I don't want to cook the start. I'll just crank it over and realize the camera's off, and we're getting 40 pounds. But if you look at the camshaft, it's really going well. I don't want to fry the starter, but that is what we're after. I'm going to stop there. It got up to 40 before. Um, and of course, all the oil runs back in. You can see all over here, that is loaded. So that is really, really, really good. We're leaking out of here, but that's because of that. The gasket and everything goes in there so we can clean all that out i'm gonna let that run off and ladies and gents we are done we're really really good that's so good i was so bloody worried about it but life's good don't think for a minute the moment you put a dry pump in that everything's going to be all right you do have to prime pumps and muck around a bit um i didn't prime it but i did mess around a bit Right, well I didn't film the seal replacement here, it's just a matter of taking that 6mm bolt out and that whole gear will come out. The seal sits in the base of here which is quite a long channel and you'll find that it falls right almost to the bottom and then just that last sort of 5mm is stepped in and that's where you sort of push it into place. Now I made a really easy rookie mistake to make and when we oil pressure tested this um, I didn't block these up. Now what's happened is it's come out of the cam box, gone straight in there I have a small hole, which means oil is all over the place down here. No big deal to clean it up. It's just a matter of a rag with a screwdriver and a bit of thinners. Um, but it's just as easy, or a lot easier, to pop those locating dowels in. And then, of course, they all just run off the around it, if you know what I mean, you just drip off this bit here. And that's even easier to clean. So make sure, when you do your oil pressure test, you put those little guys in, because they'll save you some cleaning time don't you just love the home stretch? Um, just nipping this down. And the thing I like about this bike is it's never been pulled apart. So stuff is way of fitting. And I'm just snugging these down with a screwdriver and I'll go over to the torque wrench with our JIS kit. Um, there's some super long ones. The other long one I took to the plater and I shouldn't have bothered because it goes underneath here. I didn't know that. So we'll just get them all down. Again, done the permatex with a cotton bud. Yeah, just put them in. I'm not even doing these in any sort of great order, but it makes such a difference when you use plated kit um, to the appearance of the bike, or in this case, the motor. Now, I haven't polished these caps yet, but um, I'm really, really happy about the oil pressure test. Stoked about it because that did worry me a little bit. Nip those up and we're good. Right, CB750 and the engine is in the frame. It isn't bolted in, it's just sort of got screwdrivers above and below it and a couple of bolts just locating it. Uh, just a while I wait for the other stuff to get back from the platers. Uh, got it in quite easily by sort of Tilting the engine on an angle, had a block of wood under this side, and just sort of dropped the frame in over it, leveled out the frame and just lifted it the rest of the way. The only scratch we managed to get was really, really harmless. And it's way under there, where that welded bracket is scuffed against the engine casing, which we can just touch it up with the brush and it's easy. Had to take the oil filter off, stuff those galleries, stuff the one down here uh, somewhere where the blue rag is. And also took out the sump plug because that gets in the way. And uh, the thing with that, of course, is the uh, a lot of oil. Not a lot, but a little bit of oil in the sump. And of course, when we took that return line off, there was oil up there, so the scavenge pump's working well. I left the main feed line on. Um, it was full. You can see it's down a little bit because uh, we spilt a bit out as we were putting it in. But that line's still full of oil. So I don't have to go around priming it again. Um... Really went in really, really easily. No complaints whatsoever. 
and thanks to Dave Raymakers for helping me with that. Still got to take those little caps off for the those little guys here to finish cleaning them up. They're still grotty, but that can come later. So we've got it to the point now where we can stick it on a jack, a motorcycle jack. Dave's got one. He's got the whole um, ramp type um, motorcycle stand, which is quite useful. So once I get that stuff back from the platers, then we will uh, start assembling the bike. We'll put the oil tank in and the electrical stuff. The electrical stuff looks quite simple. We've basically just got this cradle and everything sort of fits in there and that's quite easy. There's no complication with that. The wiring loom, the only damage to it was a few conductors there were just scratched. I don't think that's gone through. I peeled the tape off to have a look. I'll retape the loom. It is in thoroughly impeccable condition, even down at the loom for the rear lights and so forth. It's super clean. So much cleaner than poor Dave's XL, which was a dirt bike and suffered the consequences. Uh, this will go in beautifully. And we can then wire it up and get the thing started. Uh, the one thing I wanted to do, which I didn't, was putting in the headstock bearings. Bit of a pain uh, with the engine in, sort of hanging upside down and driving in from the bottom. But aside from that, no complaints whatsoever. A reasonably easy gig with a bare frame. The next thing we've got to do, go back to the platers, take all these little clamps off. All this stuff has to be stripped out. Um, I've had a few people say they wanted to see the carburetor rebuild, so we'll do it. And um, I need to order those parts this week for that. Um, once I've got this, the new oil filter nut. The other one, of course, is on the oil filter down there. And, uh, and uh, we'll put that back on. Once we've run it, we'll do an oil filter change, put that new bolt in, and we're good to go. And I've just put a couple of small bags just to stop debris getting in, and so on and so forth. We've got the brackets, engine mount brackets. We've got the center stand that can all go on, the side stand can go on, the foot pegs. Um, all that powder coat stuff can go on too. So we're at a stage now which is sort of really enjoyable stuff. So I'm still looking for a fork stanchion because one of them scratched up. I'm going to put gaiters on it, make it look a bit old school. But the fun stuff begins. Right, well I've had a couple of people say to me, um, please show us how you're going to do the carburetors and all that sort of stuff. And I'm going to oblige. I made a comment in the other video that um, I don't like carburetor videos because most of the time they're fairly boring. Um, the usual check the float, check that there's no gunge in the bowls and people tend to flog it like a dead horse. But anyway, we're going to do one. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I've got a sheet of paper here and I'm going to take another inventory list of everything we've got. Um, some of the internal screws like this guy, that actually locks the uh, plungers if you like onto that shaft. They're in good condition and it's futile um, replating that. You wouldn't bother. But the others that sort of go on top, if you look, some of them are quite rusty and with these I'm going to polish the tops but none of the rest of the carburetor and all new kit will look rather nice in there. So with gaskets as well, you know, we'll get replacement ones. That's reusable but of course we're going to get entire kits so we don't need to worry. So to take that we've got the lids all written up on the sheet, the bowls, the girdle, the girdle's the, um, this thing here, I refer to it as a girdle, it's, I don't know, a carburetor mount if you like, I don't know what to call it, but I'm just calling it a girdle because that's what it is to me. Um, accelerator pump housing, again, there are three of them, no there's not, there's two because I've just dropped one, I think I dropped it in there, I better make sure it's there, uh, they're the same as the, as the bowls, or the lids I should say, so I'm just better count these because I threw them all in here without counting them, just a moment. So yeah, there, the, I threw it in there, so the three of them are here, and we just checked the lengths, 10 mil, and they're all good. So there are three of those, right. So in this last video, we talked about the poor state of these carburetors. I was sort of hoping I could bang fuel and get it going, but it's not going to happen. Uh, as we said last time, that is actually seized. Two of them are seized, two of them aren't, but they're on the way. They're a little bit sticky. Uh, so this is just rotten fuel and this will happen on a engine that hasn't run for an awfully long time. Um, the bike was last registered in 88. I'm tipping 
that wasn't far off that when this, this was last run because the fuel's just in such a state. I would think it hasn't run for at least uh, 20 years. That's just a guess, which would bring it well into the 90s. Now, the kit I'm getting, as we mentioned, is a comprehensive kit. So I've got all the gaskets and O-rings and also the new floats, needles and seats, and the pins that hold those in as well. Now before we pull these apart we need to have a good look to make sure we know precisely how to get the thing back together again. Now we don't need to number the carburetors, it's easy to do with a Dremel, we can just one, two, three, four, and those sorts of areas there. Uh, this would be number one being the left hand side, um, it's only got a, these are accelerator pump distribution pipes I believe, it comes out at exits on the right so you can't get that wrong. These two centre ones are easy to confuse but they're not really because this one has a hole here with an O-ring, if I can get that out. And that is for the accelerator pump. And that bit there is, yeah, for the accelerator pump. Uh, these ones don't have it. And of course this one, that tube exits on the left. So you can get them right pretty well straight away. As far as the bowls are concerned, they're all pretty mucky. Um, again, I would recommend using a dentist tool. These O-rings are a mess. They're knackered. So I'm going to take these off. I don't care if I break them because, well, I've just broken it. We're not reusing this sort of stuff. I wouldn't dare. Um, with a carburetor in slightly better state of repair, you probably could. The pity with this is that these weren't taken out. If they were taken out or at least slacked off, all of that would have drained out the overflows and we'd have nice clean carbies that are dry. I'm going to take these off. I'm not going to bother trying to even look at them to fix them or to clean them. But I'm taking them straight to the hydroblaster and getting them dealt with there. And there we have our drain. So that can go into that box. So I've got a box for hydroblasting. I'm not sure if you can see it here. A box for plating. This is all gold. And of course, these parts. That is steel, it's not brass. So we'll take that off as well. Now, I'm going to do reasonably detailed work on this because it's going to help me put it back together later. Right, so look at the rest of it. We've got all those bowls all ready to be blasted and um, taken the drains out, so that's cool. Um, basically, we've got the stay from the back here for the cable, which is just a thing like this, which has already been plated, but I don't like it, so it's going to get redone. I'll just take that off and keep it. Matter of fact, why don't I do it now? And um, the quality of this is crap, so I want it done again, as well as the bolts. They can go in there. Uh, we've also got these other bits and pieces. So all of these have been disconnected from the rail. That one's C, so I'm in a bit of spot of bother with that. These ones are all free, so that's not too bad. But there's a lock nut with a grub screw in it here. And I think that releases the cable from the... Um, or at least that mechanism from the shaft. So that's got to get done. The other thing which I don't like about these, I'm just going to put that there for now and I'll undo that in a moment. Um, these choke butterflies, they are, uh, I took them off last year. I took one off. I took this one off. And somebody said, I looked on a forum, I think it was a, I can't remember where I looked at it, and they said, why don't you replace them. They should always be replaced because they're peened, but these ones haven't been peened. Now, they're not going to get plated. But these are the thing. The thing. This is the bit I don't like about these engines. Oh, crap, there's the phone. Just a moment. I'm just going to write here one, two, just so I remember, three and four. I might use a new screwdriver when I put these in. I'll just take that disc out, it's numbered, so that can stay with those screws. This should withdraw. The girdle's off the front, the stays off the back, the throttle disconnected from there, so there's no reason why this shouldn't come off. Except we have rock hard lines. Hmm. So we should just be able to withdraw that carby. I might just get a um, bit of penetrating oil and just spray it in there so that can slide out. That remaining fuel load, how toxic is it? Bloody awful stuff. And once we separate these, I reckon then we're in better stead to, you know, get it apart. There's also the fuel line there as well. 
Maybe I can just... Uh, I just don't want to go too far. I don't want to damage anything. This stuff is old and fragile. So I'm going to work it maybe. And once we get each carburetor separated, we've got some chance of pulling it apart and starting to get it prepared for other stuff. Mm, nice. Right, so we've got one off. Let's have a look at that. Straight off the bat, we should be able to withdraw that, which we can. And that's cool. And that's sticky down there. I can't run a rag off the end. The overhaul kit does come with a new needle. And we'll withdraw that by undoing those little Philippi heads down there. But for now, we can keep that to the side. And this sort of thing, you would always bag very, very carefully and store carefully as well. Right. Now, this little mother sucker. Pilot screw. I'm going to count how many turns it takes to get it in. Oh, no, I can't because it's seized. Well, it's only just moving. So let's have a look at this. And this isn't one of the dirty ones either. So... Oh god. Half. One. One and a half. And it stops. And I'm not going too tight there. But now I know, and I can write that here. Number one. Pilot 1.5T. So now I can take that out. I think there's a spring behind here. One and a half turns is pretty standard fair for a little mixture screw that doesn't get plated it's very very fine easy to damage so again we have to store that exceedingly carefully and there should also be a spring in there this bloke and that's actually something which will have to be cleaned very very carefully main jet now emulsion tube is under here and that's going to be a bloody mess i would think and We'll put this to the side. That's where our needle runs in and out. Right there. That's the emulsion tube. So I might get like a blade, just scrape some of that crap off. Because I will give that to the blaster as well. But I'll give it to him separately. I might put it in a vise that might be safer. Oh, I've got it. Right. There's our jet. Crap. There's the emulsion tube, which is filthy. And there is our main jet. And it's blocked solid. So that's about as good as tits on a bull. Right. So we're not looking too bad in terms of what we need to do now. We've just got to press that out. Get that out, get the needle out. Just um, So this is the seized um, pin. I've freed it a little bit, but it's not too good. I was going to use a small nail. I haven't got a pin punch that's going to be um, fine enough to get the end of that. And I really, yeah, look, it's not even going to come out, I don't think. So I'm not sure. I'm not prepared to knock it too hard. Here we go coming out. Um, so it's probably best then if we can grab it with some needle nose to sort of swing it around and maybe knock it to and fro. But if we break this, the carby's knackered because this is the... We're just going to be really careful. And I would not forgive myself. So I think probably the safest thing rather than using impact is to just get some vices and just sort of swing it out. It does a bit sort of hang on to a rail, isn't it? All right, let's have a look at this. Oh, nearly. Those floats are knackered as well. So I'm just going to grab this because I'm not intending to reuse them. And there we go. Now, we can use that as a pin on the others. We can get this out. And it looks to me as though the needle is stuck in there as well. Fancy that. It's just a mess, this thing. It is such a mess. 
Right, so that's all pressed in. We can't do much with that. And I think that's pressed in too. So I think that now is in a state where... And I can't see through it. They're blocked, so this thing was just never going to run. I might take that out too. That's a vacuum port when we balance them. Although when I balance these... Well, not that I've balanced these before. When I balance carburetors on cars, I just used, you know, just used to use a, um, a piece of tube and listen to it. That can go in for plating. So there we go. An empty carcass. So I'm going to remove the others, but that is ready to go for hydroblasting. Right, so I've got number one off. There's a couple of tubes there. That's your fuel tube. Um, of course, there's your fuel line coming in here. And that can come off. And we'll get those clips done. With these sorts of things, if you're going to plate small clips like that, they'll break. They become brittle unless you ask for them to be heat treated afterwards. There's your, I think that's the vent transfer. And this one goes up to yonder. I don't know where. <laughs> but we'll figure that bit out. And if I can just, oops, loosen the purchase on it. There we go, and we'll deal with those other parts in a moment. What I wanted to talk about, oh, there's this one too, and that's your accelerator pump transfer. Uh, this one here, so I want to take four off now, and I'm just going to take a measurement. You can count turns and this sort of thing if you want to. That is 13 millimetres. So, throttle, I'm just going to write throttle stop on my sheet of paper. 13 mil. I just write gap. And we can sort of take that out. We can count it as well, but given that it's a nil, well, a nil nut that's as stiff as a board, I don't know how successful it's going to be. Having said that, this thing appears, by all accounts, to be fairly well stuck. So it's that uh, half one, half two. 19 and for these last couple of turns I'm actually pulling it 9 and a half 20 20 and a half 21 it's loose 27 and a half 28 right so I'm just going to write 28 T there so when I put it back I'm going to go in 28 turns and um, 28 turns and measure as well so it'll give us a double sort of dose of the truth if you know what I mean. I've got those two off. Um, the number four I cannot get the slide out. I'm worried about it. I might soak it before. This spring here is under a lot of pressure and I need to take it off and it's going to snap round like that. And there's a roll pin that we need to take out that we there. We can just knock it through with a pin punch. Uh, with these, you would need to have it suitably supported while you knock it, because otherwise we're going to wind up bending that shaft. That's the last thing in the world we want to do. There we go. And then... There's our roll pin. And with luck have it, we are stuck on the shaft. Oh, we're cutting ourselves. Maybe I can... Gee whiz, that is stuck. Um, there's no other way of getting it off, I don't think. Unless we can withdraw it from there. Not sure. Not sure. So the next thing here is going to be quite tricky. What do we have to do now to get these separated? This is a two-piece shaft, this choke one. There's a spring here that's wound around there. And there's another fine one there. Now I'm not going to plate that fine one. And it all sort of, there's an adjustment too, which goes in between them. And it's really, really fiddly. Can we see in here? So they move independently, even though they're not supposed to. That's supposed to be, I've knocked that in inadvertently. I think we'll take this one off. And 
this is where things get interesting because you've got all this mechanism stuff up here. And to be quite candid, it does worry me a bit. That was really, really smart, wasn't it? Right. Right, this is going to be quite complicated to get back together because they sort of join. I've taken the butterflies out to make it a bit kind of easier to get my head around. The bulk of it sits on number two. Number three just sort of comes off. So I'm just going to separate those lines because some of the restrictions or some of the difficulty I'm having is because the lines are quite rotted on. But this should all... So I might have to undo that just for a moment. But this has turned out to be a horrendous pain in the backside. So good luck to anyone that has to put these things back on. Which is me. <laughs> so, what are we, oh god, we've got more. I can't get this off, that's joined, right, so I'm going to have to take that little spring out. And, you know what, I'm going to forget. I just know it. But I can't do it any other way. And even that only fits out through the cutout in that wheel. Bloody hell, that is horrendous. Right, so. We're not plating those. Well, you gosh, that's really weak. But what I will do is I will put that spring over there and put it in storage. This is loose anyhow. But, gosh, this stuff can all be plated. There's a circlet there too. Mr. Ruth, this is ugly. Write that up, and this one can come up as well. That can come out. Which one's this? Number two, isn't it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like it because, you know why I don't like it? And it's because I have this fear that I'm going to forget how it all goes. And so that's why I'm going to change the plating over tomorrow and just try as soon as I get it back to get it back in order. What has this got? Bloody hell. So it's got two flat washers. Alright, just a moment. One thing I've noticed is that every jet in this thing is completely blocked. Every single one. Emulsion tubes are the same, completely blocked. And combined with no compression, this thing was just never in a million years going to run. So, it doesn't matter. We'll just do what we need to do. It's got a circlet, but it's a wire type circlet. And getting it off might damage it, and I don't want to damage it. I dug it out with pliers. It's this. Really, really tough to get off. And then, of course, there's a thrusty washer. That one. And there's a spring. I'll just disarm the spring. In which case, that will come off. Go in there. Just knock that out, which is easier said than done because this one's stuck as well. There's another one bites the dust. Right. Taking that grub screw off, I had to really reef on that with a Allen key. Put in there with a spin off the end. I thought I was going to break the key, but it doesn't matter. We've got it off in one piece, which is rather good. And we've got this little guy. Might clean up all right. I've um, got the stuck carburetor sitting in a bit of dirty thinner to try and th free it. I might leave this. I might just clean that and put it back on. It might just be easier. Just swill that around a bit, try and free it up. 
can't see it doing any good in the time I've got though, because I have to go and do stuff tomorrow. Right. You can come out. That's number three. Throttle return spring. Don't know if we want to plate that too. On the off chance that it does become brittle, the last thing you need is your throttle getting stuck on. So I might leave that and this as well. I'll just put that roll pin back in. I don't think we need to plate absolutely everything. Um, as long as it's clean and functional, that roll pin can go back in there. So I'm just keeping those old bits just for sizing, but that's ready for the plater as well. But what I'm having trouble with is this other thing. Here, this guy. Looks really clean like that. Maybe turn around. Give it a scrub. Let's try let that thinner soak up and soften the uh, dried fuel. Cayenne. Nice carbies. How's that soften this? Oh, look. This stuff doesn't seem to like thinner. Let's give it some more. I don't even know if this ice cream container is impervious to thinner, but it isn't. It is washing it off, look. That dark stain that was as hard as a rock has relinquished. That's promising. So in summary, we're keeping some of these small bits here, not to reuse, but to ascertain the correct length. Um, so we can cut the right length of tube as we get at. I'm taking these off and I'll get them plated too. Nice little clamps against the uh, black fuel lines. They look pretty good. So if they break, well, I'll just buy some new ones. Someone will have them. Right, so I've got a box full of carburetor parts for the hydro blaster, uh, as well as main jets and emulsion tubes. The um, main jets get replaced anyway, I think. There's our gold plating stuff in there. And what I've noticed about this, I've got this sitting in thinner. Thinner seems to do a remarkable job of removing that residue. So it's probably okay to use thinner and then in, say an ultrasonic bath. I don't know. I just think at this stage with that much sort of, it's not even wet, that's dry. That's a resin sort of soak that is, it might be safe with the blaster because you can sort of get down all those bits and pieces there. Now, of course, we've got a box full of things in order. We know which carb is which because we've got the choke flaps numbering everything. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to say goodbye. So in the next chapter, we will map that properly and start putting things on the bike. While we're waiting for electroplating, hydroblasting and carburetor overhaul kits to get here. And after that, of course, we get started. The box. What is in the box? I'll divulge that in the next chapter. Uh, so thanks very much for watching. Enjoy Classic and I'll see you around.